Let's talk about supplements and supplementation and how to develop a rational supplementation regimen. One of the things that's really emerged over the last 20 years is that supplements, and there I'm referring to non-prescription compounds designed to augment nutrition, prescription drugs, and behavioral protocols, have emerged as a mainstay within the health and wellness, but also the medical communities that are focused on developing mental health, physical health, and performance for their patients and their athletes and for the everyday person. Essentially, what I'm saying is that 20 years ago, a discussion about supplements would mainly take place within the niche communities of health food stores or of particular athletes. But nowadays, I think almost everyone is familiar with the fact that, yes, indeed, there are standard vitamin supplements, but that there are also supplements such as vitamin D3, which are designed to make sure that people have certain amounts of hormones in their bloodstream because they might not be getting enough sunshine. Although I'll be very clear over and over throughout this episode that there is no pill replacement for sunshine, nor is there a pill replacement or food replacement for that matter for exercise or for social connection or for sleep or for simply getting smarter. Again, there is no pill that's going to replace excellent behavioral protocols. In fact, a physician friend of mine has a great saying that I think everybody should keep in mind as we wade into this conversation, which is that better living through chemistry still requires better living. And I think that's a very important phrase to keep in mind when thinking about the optimal supplementation or prescription drug protocol for you. So what is an ideal supplementation protocol? Well, I think what we need to do is to take a step back and ask what are different supplements designed to do? For instance, there are foundational supplements. These are supplements that are designed to establish a foundation or provide insurance along with your nutritional intake to ensure that you're getting all the things that you need in order to have a basic level of mental health, physical health, and opportunity for optimal performance. Now, this is the one category of supplements for which I think it's appropriate and in fact advantageous to have multiple ingredients in a given supplement. But when it comes to foundational supplements, what we're mainly talking about are supplements that contain vitamins and minerals that are designed to compensate for any deficiencies you might have from diet or from lack of adequate diet. How would such a lack of vitamin and mineral intake arise? Well, for instance, if you're somebody that practices intermittent fasting or other components of fasting, or if you're somebody who does not get enough vitamins and minerals from vegetables and fruits and grains and meats, well then taking a supplement that can act as an insurance policy against any vitamin and mineral deficiencies in many ways can be advantageous. Although I will talk about some of the uh, safety concerns in just a few minutes. Now I want to acknowledge that as soon as we talk about vitamin mineral supplements, the skeptics immediately raise their hands and say, well, all that vitamin and mineral supplements do is give you very expensive urine. And there, the skeptics are referring to the fact, the reality, that when you ingest high levels of water-soluble vitamins, so think vitamin C and some of the other vitamins, that indeed you will excrete them in your urine. However, it's also the case that many people are not getting enough of the water-soluble vitamins from their foods. And it's also the case that many people are. And it's also the case that ingesting higher than needed amounts of most water soluble vitamins, provided those levels aren't exceedingly high, is, or at least we should say can be safe. And again, this is provided that the levels that they're ingesting are not exceedingly high. So the typical vitamin mineral supplement is indeed going to cover any gaps or deficiencies that might arise in the water soluble vitamins from your food intake. But the reality is that most people are getting enough of the water soluble vitamins from their food if they are paying attention to a couple of things. And those things are very simple to lay out regardless of whether or not you're a vegan, a vegetarian, a more traditional omnivore eating from both animal-based and plant-based sources, grains, etc., or even if you're in the pure carnivore or strict, uh, I guess it's called the lion diet, where it's just meat and salt. Regardless of what type of nutrition you follow, you will get vitamins and minerals, but you'll get more or fewer of them depending on the nutritional program you follow, and of course, depending on how often and how much you eat. That's just sort of obvious. Most people who take a vitamin mineral supplement will indeed excrete a lot of the water-soluble vitamins. They will retain the fat-soluble vitamins. And there again, the skeptics will raise their hands and say, 
you do not want to take high levels of fat soluble vitamins because they will be stored in your system potentially to levels that are dangerous. Again, provided that vitamin mineral supplements are not taken in excess, it's unlikely that you're going to have such a buildup of the fat soluble vitamins in your system that they're going to be a problem. So that raises a very specific question that you need to ask. Do you want to take a vitamin mineral supplement? Well, the answer to that will be highly individual, but you really just need to address two things. First of all, is the cost within the range that you can afford and want to pay, right? Oftentimes these vitamin mineral supplements can be quite inexpensive, but some of them can be quite expensive. And you can see the full range of ones that are pennies per day, all the way up to many dollars or tens of dollars per day because of what are reported to be variations in quality and sourcing and so forth. I'm not aware of any real differences between the quality of the water soluble and fat soluble vitamins found in the less expensive versus the more expensive vitamin mineral supplements. More typically, the cost scales with the dosages of these different vitamins and minerals. And as could probably be expected, the more expensive to obtain and source vitamins and minerals tend to be in lower quantities in the less expensive versions of vitamin and mineral supplements. That's just kind of obvious. So you need to ask yourself, can you afford it financially? And then you need to ask yourself, are you able to regularly ingest enough foods with enough variety to cover your vitamin mineral needs just from food? And for some people, the answer is going to be an immediate yes. They are careful to get enough of the foods that allow them to obtain their vitamin and mineral quota. And for other individuals, the answer will be no. I would say for people that are extremely physically and or mentally active, and for people that perhaps are following a intermittent fasting schedule, so they are not ingesting a lot of food in general or restricting their food intake to specific times of day, well, then a vitamin mineral supplement likely makes sense for them. However, it's going to be very important to ingest that vitamin mineral supplement with food and ideally early in the day. So that can set up a little bit of a challenge for the intermittent fasters who are restricting their feeding window to late in the day. Why do I say this? Well, many of the water soluble vitamins, in particular the B vitamins, need to be ingested with food because otherwise they can cause some stomach upset. And again, there's a range there. Some people like myself can take B vitamins on an empty stomach and feel fine. Other people feel really lousy when they take B vitamins. There are a few other things that we'll talk about later, um, namely zinc and coenzyme Q10 that really should also be taken with food. But the best time to take a vitamin mineral supplement is with food. And I believe that if you're going to take a vitamin mineral supplement, that you want to take it with food and you don't want to take dosages of vitamins and minerals from supplements that are exceedingly high for a couple of reasons. One is the buildup of fat soluble vitamins that we talked about before. The other reason is that when people tend to take very high levels of vitamins and minerals from supplements, they tend to spend less time and focus on making sure that they're optimizing their nutrition or at least trying to get their nutrition right. What do I mean by getting their nutrition right? Well, I think regardless of whether or not you're keto, omnivore, carnivore, vegan, or any other nutritional plan, the key thing is to get most, that is about 75 to 80% of your foods or more from non-processed or minimally processed sources. I think there is agreement across the board that most people should avoid highly processed foods. Highly processed foods are going to be foods with very long ingredient lists that have very long shelf lives. So this often includes snack foods. It does include snack foods like chips, etc., pastries that could sit on the shelf a long time. But it also includes things like canned soups and number of different other foods that have many, many ingredients, preservatives. Most people would do well to avoid those kinds of foods and focus most of their intake on things that are non-processed. So these would be things like fruits and vegetables. You'll notice that the non-processed foods will tend to have very short shelf life or require refrigeration in some cases, such as meat, eggs, etc., or minimally processed foods, such as you know rice and oatmeal and pastas, beans and things of that sort. Beans oftentimes can be completely unprocessed as well, of course. These are two general categories, unprocessed and minimally processed that should make up about 80% or more of your food intake if your goal is health and obtaining adequate amounts of vitamins and minerals. The so-called foundational supplements include, of course, vitamin and mineral supplements, but has expanded over the last decade or more to also include supplements that have vitamins and minerals 